In case Anaklito COC is properly cancelled, who should serve as mayor of Ardenia City? Arnaldo, who obtained the second highest number of votes, or Andrea, the duly elected vice mayor of the city? Suggested answer. The rule on succession would not apply if the permanent vacancy was caused by one whose certificate of candidacy was void ab initio. Specifically with respect to dual citizens, their certificates of candidacy are void ab initio because they possess a substantive disqualifying circumstance existing prior to the filing of their certificate of candidacy. Legally, they should not even be considered candidates. The votes cast for them sh should be considered stray and should not be counted. In cases of vacancies caused by those with void ab initio certificates of candidacy, the person legally entitled to the vacant position would be the candidate who garnered the next highest number of votes among those eligible. In this case, it was Arnaldo, Chua v. Comelec, GR No. 216607, April 5, 2016. Question. Two petitions for the cancellation of certificate of candidacy denial of due course were filed with the Comelec against two candidates running as municipal mayors of different towns. The first petition was against Anselmo. Years ago, Anselmo was charged and convicted of the crime of rape by final judgment and was sentenced to suffer the principal penalty of reclusion perpetua which carried the accessory penalty of perpetual absolute disqualification. While Anselmo was in prison, the president commuted his sentence and he was discharged for prison. The second petition was against Ambrosio. Ambrosio residency was questioned because he was allegedly a green card holder, example a permanent resident of the U.S., as evidenced by a certification to this effect from the U.S. Embassy. Acting on the recommendation of its law department, the Comilec and Bank Moto Proprio issued two resolutions granting the petitions against Anselmo and Ambrosio. Both Anselmo and Ambrosio filed separate petitions with the Supreme Court assailing the resolutions cancelling their respective COCs. Both claimed that the Comilec and Bank acted with grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction because the petition should have first heard and resolved by one of the Comilec's division. Are Anselmo and Ambrosio correct? Suggested answer. Anselmo is correct. The rule is every quasi judicial matter must first be tackled by a division subject to appeal by way of a motion for reconsideration to the Comelec and Bank. In Halos Hos v. Comelec, GR No. 205033, June 18, 2013, it was determined that a cancellation on the basis of perpetual disqualification is a matter that can be taken judicial notice of. When it cancels ACOC on that ground, it is acting in performance of an administrative function and therefore the rule in Article 11, Section 3 does not apply. Ambrosio, on the other hand, is correct that the petition for the cancellation of his COC should have been first heard and resolved by the Comelec Division. Cancellation proceedings involve the Comelec's quasi-judicial functions. The Constitution mandates the Comelec, in the exercise of its adjudicatory or quasi-judicial powers to hear and decide cases first by division and upon motion for reconsideration by the Comelec and Bank. Bautista v. Comelec, GR Numbers 154796-97, October 23, 2003. Question. In 1990, Agrippina migrated to Canada and acquired Canadian citizenship. In 2008, Agrippina retired and returned to the Philippines to permanently reside in her hometown of Angeles, Pampanga. A month after returning to the Philippines, Agrippina 
took her oath of allegiance and executed a sworn renunciation of her Canadian citizenship in accordance with RA number 9225. In 2009, Agrippina filed her Certificate of Candidacy for Congress for the 2010 elections. Agrippina political rivals lost no time in causing the filing of various actions to question her candidacy. They questioned her eligibility to run as member of Congress. Since Agrippina had to take an oath under RA number 9225, it meant that she needed to perform an act to perfect her Philippine citizenship. They claimed therefore that Agrippina could not be considered a natural born citizen. Agrippina raised the defense that having complied with the requirements of RA number 9225, she had reacquired and was deemed never to have lost her Philippine citizenship. Is Agrippina disqualified to run for Congress for failing to meet the citizenship requirement? Suggested answer. Agrippina is eligible to run as member of Congress. Repatriation results in the recovery of a person's original nationality. This means that a naturalized Filipino who lost his citizenship will be restored to his prior status as a Filipino citizen. If she were originally a natural-born citizen before she lost her Philippine citizenship, she would be restored to her former status as a natural-born Filipino. Being son the third versus HR, HRET GR number 142840, May 7, 2001. See also Pareno versus Commission on Audit, GR number 1622224, June 7, 2007, and Tabasa versus Commission on Elections, GR numbers 221697 and 221698 700, March 8, 2016. RA 9225 makes a distinction between those natural-born Filipinos who became foreign citizens before and after the effectivity of RA number 9225. For those who were naturalized in a foreign country, they shall be deemed to have reacquired their Philippine citizenship which was lost pursuant to CA 63. In the case of those who became foreign citizens after RA 9225 took effect, they shall retain Philippine citizenship despite having acquired foreign citizenship provided they took the oath of allegiance under the new law. Considering that petitioner was naturalized as a Canadian citizen prior to the effectivity of RA 9225, she belongs to the first category of natural-born Filipinos who lost their Philippine citizenship by naturalization in a foreign country under the first paragraph of Section 3. As the new law allows dual citizenship, she was able to reacquire her Philippine citizenship by taking the required oath of allegiance. See Bingson v. HRET and as affirmed by Paul Liaman Sares v. Komilek. GR number 221697, March 8, 2016. Question. Asserting the constitutionality of the following acts. Letter A. An investigation conducted by the Ombudsman against a commissioner of the Commission on Audit for Serious Misconduct. Suggested answer. The act is constitutional. Article 11, Section 13, 1 of the Constitution expressly gives the Ombudsman the power to investigate on its own or on complaint by any person, any act or omission of any public official, employee, office or agency when such act or omission appears to be illegal, unjust, improper or inefficient. Alternative suggested answer. The Act is constitutional. All the commissioner of any of the constitutional commissions is removable only through impeachment. This rule does not preclude the ombudsman from conducting an investigation who into the alleged serious misconduct committed by impeachable officials for the purpose of filing a verified complaint for impeachment. Section 22 RA 6770 Carpio Morales versus CA 
GR number 217126-27, November 2015. Another alternative suggested the answer. The act is constitutional since serious misconduct is not a ground for impeachment. Given the limited facts of the case, it cannot be assumed that serious misconduct in this case amounts to betrayal of public trust. Letter B. A law prohibiting any court other than the Supreme Court from issuing a writ of injunction against an investigation being conducted by the Ombudsman. Suggested answer. The law is unconstitutional. The power to issue injunctive writs is part of judicial power. The rules governing the exercise of this power are within the powers of the Supreme Court to promulgate. The law, therefore, is an encroachment of the court's rule-making power. Carpio Morales v. CA, GR 217126-27, 10 November 2015. Letter C. A law prohibiting any appeal from the decision or final order of the Ombudsman in an administrative proceeding except through a petition for review on certiorari filed before the Supreme Court. Suggested answer. The law is unconstitutional. In Fabian v. Desierto, GR No. 129742, 16 September 1998, the court invalidated Section 27 of RA No. 6770 insofar as it provided for appeal by certiorari under Rule 45 from the decisions or orders of the Ombudsman in administrative cases. Section 27 of RA No. 6770 had the effect not only of increasing the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court without its advice and concurrence in violation of Section 30, Article 6 of the Constitution. It is also inconsistent with Section 1, Rule 45 of the Rules of Court, which provides that a petition for review on certiorari shall apply only to a review of judgments or final orders of the Court of Appeals, the Sandigan Bayan, the Court of Tax Appeals, the Regional Trial Court, or other courts authorized by law in the absence of concurrent Supreme Court such a law would be unconstitutional question under section 6 of article 6 on criminal jurisdiction of the visiting forces agreement VFA the custody of a United States personnel who become subject to criminal prosecution before a Philippine court shall be with the U.S. military authorities if the latter so requests. The custody shall begin from the commission of the offense until the completion of all judicial proceedings. When requested, the U.S. military authorities, however, shall make the U.S. personnel available to Philippine authorities for any investigative or judicial proceedings relating to the offense which the person has been charged. In the event that the Philippine judicial proceedings are not completed with one year, the U.S. shall be relieved of any obligation under Section 6. The constitutionality of Section 6, Article 5 of the VFA is challenged on two grounds. One, it nullifies the exclusive power of the Supreme Court to adopt rules of procedure for all courts in the Philippines. And two, it violates the Equal Protection Clause to the extent that it allows the transfer of the custody of an accused to a foreign power as providing a different rule of procedure for that cost for that accused rule on the challenge suggested answer the challenge is without merit the rule in international law is that foreign armed forces allowed to enter one's territory are immune from local jurisdiction except to the extent agreed upon as a result the situation involved is not one in which the power of the supreme court to adopt rules procedure is curtailed or violated. Rather, it is one in which, as is normally encountered around the world, the laws including rules of procedure of one state do not extend or apply except to the extent agreed upon to subjects of another state due to the recognition of extraterritorial immunity given to such bodies as visiting foreign armed forces. Nothing in the Constitution prohibits such agreements 
recognizing immunity from jurisdiction or some aspects of jurisdiction such as custody in relation to long recognized subjects of such immunity like heads of state diplomats and members of the armed forces contingents of a foreign state allowed to enter another state's territory the constitution on the contrary states that the philippines adopts the generally accepted principles of international law as part of the law of the land article 2 section 2 the equal protection clause is not violated either because there is a substantial basis for a different treatment of foreign military armed forces allowed to enter in our territory and all other acts accused Nicholas versus Romano, GR number 175888, February 11, 2009. Question. Section 9 of PD number 1606 as amended provides that the Sindigan Bayan may adopt internal rules governing all allotment of cases among its divisions, the rotation of justices among them, and other matters relating to the internal operations of the court. Section 6 of Article 9-A of the Constitution allows each of the Constitutional Commission and Bank to promulgate its own rules concerning pleadings and practice before it or before any of its offices. Such rules, however, shall not diminish, increase, or modify substantive rights. Section 16-3 of Article 6 of the Constitution states that each house may determine the rules of its proceedings. Section 21, Article 6 of the Constitution further provides that the Senate or the House of Representatives or any of its respective committees may conduct inquiries in accordance with its duly published rules of procedure. Finally, Section 38 of Article 9 of the Constitution declares that the Congress shall promulgate its rules on impeachment to effectively carry out the purpose of this section. Are the rules promulgated pursuant to the provision subject to review and disapproval by the Supreme Court? Suggested answer. Section 5, Paragraph 5 or Article 8 of the Constitution clearly provides that the rules of procedure of special courts and quasi-judicial bodies shall remain effective unless disapproved by the Supreme Court. Accordingly, it is clear that the Supreme Court may review and reverse the rules of procedure of the Sandigan Bayan and the Constitutional Commissions. With respect to the rules of procedure of Congress and its proceedings, legislative inquiries, and on impeachment, while these rules may be generally considered as political questions, when questioned before the courts in a proper case, they would nevertheless be subject to the power of judicial review under the second paragraph of Section 1, Article 8 of the Constitution, which authorizes it to review and annul all acts of any branch or instrumentality of the government which may be tainted with grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction. Alternative answer. Although the rules of procedure of the Sandigan Bayan are covered by the disapproval authority of the Supreme Court as stated in Section 5.5 of Article 8 of the Constitution, the same thing cannot be said for the rules of procedure promulgated by Congress by virtue of the doctrine of separation of powers unless these rules are tainted with grave abuse of discretion. The rules of procedure of the Constitutional Commissions are likewise outside the disapproval authority of the Supreme Court as these commissions are deliberately placed in the Constitution to be independent unless these are tainted with grave abuse of discretion. Question. PO1 Adrian Andal is known to have taken bribes from apprehended motorists who have violated traffic rules. The National Bureau of Investigation conducted an entrapment operation where PO1 Adrian was caught red-handed demanding and taking 500 pesos from a motorist who supposedly beat a red light. After he was apprehended, PO1 Adrian was required to submit a sample of his urine. The drug test showed that he was positive for dangerous drugs. 
Hence, PO1 Adrian was charged with violation of Section 15, Article 2 of RA 9165 or the Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. PO1 Adrian argues against the admissibility of the urine test results and seeks its exclusion. He claims that the mandatory drug test under RA 9165 is a violation of the accused right to privacy and against self-incrimination. Are PO1 Adrian's contention correct? Suggested answer. PO1 Adrian is correct that his rights to privacy and against self-incrimination have been violated. The results of the confirmatory urine test should therefore be rejected as evidence against him. It should be noted that RA 9165 allows the conduct of urine tests only for persons arrested for acts prohibited under said law, such as among others the manufacturing, sale, use, or possession of illegal drugs and not for any unlawful act like extortion for which PO1 Adrian was arrested. De La Cruz v. People, GR No. 200748, July 23, 2014.